What's up everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com and I'm about to interview Mr. Danger Zone, Mitch Clark. Now Mitch Clark is 11 and 3 and he is set to take on Irish Joe Joseph Duffy at UFC Fight Night 90. So we're going to give him a call and find out kind of what's been going on with him over the past year and what can we expect from him in this bout. So let's give Danger Zone a call and see what he has to say about all this. Hello? Mr. Mitch Clark. How's it going? Eddie Mercado here with Bloody Elbow. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to talk with me. You got a big fight coming up. You're taking on Irish Joe Joseph Duffy at UFC Fight Night 90 on July 7th. Huge card. It's, you're going to be on the main card. And, uh, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen you last. Um, can you kind of elaborate on, uh, you know, kind of what the past year has been like for you and uh, what you've been doing since your Michael Kies about? I you know, just hanging out playing Nintendo. <laughs> uh, no, um, you know, it just, uh, I had a couple of injuries from, uh, from the Kiesa fight, which I had to rehab, and then um, I was just working to kind of shore up some of my discrepancies that I was missing, and then I had my freak needle accident, and then I uh, did a pro submission match in Nova Scotia, which was really cool. It, was nice to, it got me kind of excited about about training and, and fighting again. And then just since then, I was like, I just tried to want to get healthy and not just healthy, but like stay in good shape and be ready if I needed to, to take a short notice fight because usually I'm not that guy because I get more of the obese in between fights. <laughs> so uh, the, thing, the thing was is keep my weight low. And uh, I was doing a lot of work in terms of fixing posture and stuff like that. And, you know, I just training hard. And then I changed up my camp and went to uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Here we are. Here, yeah. here we are. <laughs> so, has that been the issue? Has it been injuries? Because since 2012, you've had one year or one fight each year. So, has that has that been the reason for that? Um, well, yeah. Essentially, you know, you have to kind of look at at kind of what was going on when when I fought Anton Kavanen, I blew out my knee. When I fought John McGuire, my my back like. Um, it just my back was all messed up, um, and then later on, it, we found out there was posture issue, posture issues that was a big part of that. When I fought Al, when I was hitting that submission, my elbow started popping. So you know, it, it partially injuries, but at the same time, you know, um, in between fights, I wanted to take time to grow as an athlete. You know, um, add to my skill set. If you're fighting every three, four months, you're not really getting better your time you'll get a little bit better you might add one kit one thing to your toolkit but if you look since every fight i've improved in one area usually in a giant leap so you know the idea is i you know if if you don't get better you're getting worse so i've just been trying to improve as a fighter as a martial artist as a person you know making those leaps and 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 so i can put on better shows every time i fight okay all right, now, how did you even get mixed up into MMA to begin with? I mean, you're a professional fighter. How did that come to be? Um, well, I I wrestled in high school and college, and I did some judo. Um, and then, you know, I was kind of like, I didn't really want to wrestle anymore. So we're like, I was watching uh, TV, and then you saw a commercial with Ultimate Fighter, and I was like, I remember that because I'd watched Ultimate Ultimate growing up, and then, and then, you know, it just happened. You know, I was just like, "Oh, I'm gonna try that out. That looks like fun." And I went to the local MMA gym, and I got beat up, and I signed up immediately. <laughs> okay, now is that where you got your nickname from? No, that was several years later. Um, my dad had done up a bunch of shirts for one of my fights. He's a graphic artist. And, you know, it was a caricature of me. And then I'm like, well, we need to fill in some space. And he had a cage on there. And he's like, welcome to the danger zone. was printed on it. And one of my teammates at the time, Victor Bachman, just kept calling me danger zone. And then before the fight, um, the, the, the 
the ref, uh, not the ref, the MC was like, you have a nickname? No. And then he goes up, Victor goes up to the MC and it's like, his nickname's Danger Zone. So, <laughs> it just, it, and because I hated it, it stuck, but it's unique. It's different from all the assassins and pit bulls and etc. you know, and right. really mean stuff. It, it's something different, so I like it. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of repetitive names. I think you might be the only Danger Zone. I dig it, man. I it's, hope so. It's good. It's real good. <laughs> now, um, how'd you get mixed up in the MMA lab with John Crouch and all of them? Uh, well, we I was, I was doing a camp with my buddy Brian Cobb, and we were going all through California, and then I needed to do a camp. I was like, I need to like go somewhere, be there consistently for five, six weeks. And my manager, and my manager, like just kind of like he'd met John Crouch. And he's like, you're paying your guys in a place to train. And it just kind of fell into it. I was rooming, like I was, I stayed at Benson Henderson's house. There's great experiences. No, I didn't get the result, the fight I wanted. I still had worked so hard and, you know, uh, improved a lot in, for that fight. Okay. Now, who are the, some of the guys you're training with at the MMA lab right now? I'm at, uh, uh, for this, for this, for this fight or for the last fight? Oh, like you're not, started, are you not at the lab for this fight? No, I'm at uh, Jackson Wink. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So what brought that okay. on? Um, you know, I just, I kind of needed to change things up personally in terms of I, I needed to be a little bit more selfish, get a little bit more um, personal attention. They have such a, a, a staff at, at Jackson Wink, and I talked to a couple of the coaches, and they said, yeah, come on down. And they just, it, the, the atmosphere seemed great. And, um, you know, their big thing is preventing overtraining. So that was um, the big focus was just getting the best out of me we could. Okay. Have you, uh, have you trained with Phil Hawes at all? Yeah, he's a stud. Yeah, he, uh, he just had his World Series of Fighting debut uh, at World Series of Fighting 31. And uh, he's already going to be back at it. I believe uh, July thirtieth at World Series of Fighting thirty two, so uh, I'm excited to see there's, him. He's a uh, yeah, he's a stud. There's a reason why there's hype around him. Yeah, he's he's definitely impressive. So uh, I want to I want to talk about your Ally Quinta fight for a second because uh, okay. I mean the nickname Danger Zone just seems so fitting there. It's like you know. I went to, he, he seemed to be doing well on his feet, and then, for whatever reason, he decided to come into the danger zone. And, I mean, you put him to sleep. And, and it was so unconventional how you caught. Now, do you call it a Dars, or is it Brabo? I know you're Canadian. Is it a Canadian Dars, or is it a Brabo choke? Uh, I call it a Dars, you know what I mean? We have a name for it now. We call it the, the Bone Daddy. The Bone Daddy? Um, yeah, just because, like, uh, well, I have such long forearms, the, the kind of cutting part on my, my wrist is usually what catches and finishes it. And one, I was teaching at a seminar, and um, a guy's like, oh, you're so bony. It's like, and then someone just, just named it the Bone Daddy. So well, we named it the Bone Daddy, and now we have a backup move called the Bone Daddy Junior. So, <laughs> um, you know, like, the thing was, like, in that second round, you doing well, and then I, I kind of clipped him and caught his foot at the same time. And I was like, oh, he's down. And I just rushed after him and um, and got taken down because of it. I partially sprawled, and I remember my hip smashed into his face, and I think that was part of it. But he was trying to climb up my body in the side control. And, you know, I I compete in sport jiu-jitsu. I do sport jiu-jitsu, and I, I, I'm about attacking all the time. So the big thing was, you know, like that's the move I do, and it just like it fell into place. So the only thing that changed was there's a little bit of cage, so it worked out well. Okay, now you were a brown belt at the time, correct? Yeah. Are you still a brown belt? I'm still a brown belt. Still a brown belt. Okay, hey, no shame in that. There's no shame in that at all. All right, so you know, you uh, you finished Ally Quinta in impressive fashion, off off for a year, come back and face. Michael Chiesa on the main card at uh, UFC Fight Night 63. Now, uh, can you yeah. kind of go into that bout a little bit and kind of what was your mindset going into it and, and what are your thoughts on how the fight played out? 
you know, the biggest thing going into that, there were, the focus of what to do wasn't there, you know, like the coaching staff at the time was like, just go out there, go fight, you know, you're the better fighter, and I wholeheartedly believe that, but I didn't have like a set game plan of what I was going to do, and I think that that led to that chaos, and it led to him getting on my back so easily, and then in between the second and third, they're like, hey, um, we need to go out and go finish him, you know, go finish him with your hands, and you go out there and you know, I hurt him a couple times and, and moved a lot. And I was being aggressive and what, doing what I needed to do. Unfortunately, I uh, couldn't put him away. And, and and then he went on to see the study is now. So, um, you know, and no one, no one wants to be uh, a, a stepping stone for someone. But, like, he's done well against, he's finished good guys and he didn't finish me. So, you know, I mean, it's a little bit of a bolster. Okay. Now, do you think with a uh, a, a bit of a – I don't want to say a just completely game, a complete game plan, but with a, a different game plan, do you think that fight would have played out a little differently? I think it would have played out differently. You know, I don't like to play too much in the what-ifs game. I, I Obviously, I think I can I can win that fight. Um, you know, I, I just kind of need to have a different mindset and focus, but, you know, I can't play in the past and – you know, I just use it as a, as a growing experience, and that's the best thing I can do from it. Okay. Now, uh, in between the second and third round, like you were saying, your coaches were telling you to let your hands go, and you did just that. I mean, you came out, you're using your footwork, and you were putting hands on Kiesa. Can you kind of elaborate yeah. on the progression of your striking? Because obviously you're a jiu-jitsu-based guy, but can you talk about the evolution of you as a complete mixed martial artist? Well, um, the big thing in between those fights that I started working a lot more at Avenue Boxing with uh, with the uh, uh, coach at Milan Lubovic and Jelena Mergenovic they're both uh, high level boxers so they wanted to kind of change me a little bit uh, instead of being so Muay Thai based I let those hands go and the big thing was a footwork footwork wins fights and um, you know that better footwork allowed for me to be able to move better and get things going a little bit better so um that was a big thing for me was just, you know, um, you know, uh, changing that up and adding that into the game and, and just remember that consistency is what, what breeds success. And it was just being consistent and keep on, keep on working and, and building my craft. And, and I think it made a big difference. And I think, uh, you know, consistently going there, is, it can make me as well-rounded as possible. Okay. Now you talked about, you know, kind of bolstered your confidence a little bit with Kiesa going on to, do pretty well now i mean the same it can be said for ally quinta i mean he's been doing he's been doing pretty well as of late you know he's right up there at the top of the lightweight division kies is right there at the top of the division where do you rank yourself as far as the division goes uh i think part of it is uh, the reason why i'm not ranked super high is just due to the fact that periods of inactivity um but I'm not here for rankings. I'm I'm here to have good fights, and then when when things come together and those wins, like all my hard work pays off, you know, then I'll be top fifteen, and then you start climbing towards that shiny belt. Uh, you know, uh, in terms of rankings, I don't know where I sit because you know just due to time off. But I, I'm in here training, and as a fighter, I think you know a couple of good wins, I'll be in that top fifteen for sure. Okay. Now, on your plate right now, you have Joseph Duffy. Of course, yeah. he came over. He was the last guy to defeat Conor McGregor before the DS thing. Um, he's been doing really well in the UFC. He showed tremendous punching power. Um, you know, in his last fight with Dustin Poirier, he kind of he showed some holes in his grappling. Is, is that something that you think you're going to exploit? Um, partially. You know, I'm not going to. The, the guys who just go in there and there's uh, the last Brazilian he fought, he tried to go in there with that kind of game plan and it blew up in his face and he got triangled because of it. You know, you got to be smart. You got to go use your game plan and you can't just go in there expecting you're just going to like smash through his grappling just because he's a good boxer. He's a good grappler too. He's got good boxing and he moves well and he's confident. So the big thing is just being as smart as possible and, and um, you know, he set part of the game plan, but I think also his win and set the game plan of what not to do. So, um, you know, it's just kind of putting it all together and, and being the best me I can. Okay. Now, I mean, 
obviously he's a pretty tall fighter. Now, have you come up with a game plan to kind of address his range? Uh, I think people forget that I have really long arms, and I think he's maybe an inch taller than me, if that. I'm 5'10 and a half. Um, it says 73 on my reach, but I know it's longer than that. So um, I'm not too worried. I've, I've also like working with a lot of long, rangy welterweights and stuff like that as helps. You know, so it's just about um, getting my stuff going. Okay. Now, when you consider level of competition that each of you have faced, are you a little bit surprised that you are such a heavy underdog in this fight? I, I've been an underdog every fight. It's, it's, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And before I used to get under my skin, but it, you know, I, I don't know how bad it is. I don't really care. Um, but I'm gonna be an underdog every fight, so I don't really, I don't really give a shit. Okay. You got a <laughs> you got a prediction for how you see the fight playing out? You know, I I, I think uh, just me moving, uh, me getting my game plan going, moving on him, making him feel uncomfortable, and then. You know, if if he gives me something, I'm gonna take it. If, but I, I got, you know, I've been training at elevation too. I'm, I'm ready to go full 15, 15 minutes and I'm on. So, um, just go out there, go be me, and and uh, plan on coming out with the hand raised. Okay, I dig it. Now, um, what would be after that for Danger Zone? Obviously, a Pizza. top ten, of course. You know, I, I, I'll fight whoever they tell me to fight. That's my big thing. And I know it's kind of cliche, but, you know, I, I don't know very much about matchmaking. They, this is a good fight on paper, I think. Um, so the big thing is just kind of like, whatever they tell me, I'm going to go to. Okay. Now, what are you doing to unwind for this fight? Uh, I've been playing some Nintendo DS and the Mega Man X and then nice. watching... Uh, Watching some old school pro wrestling. That's about it. <laughs> How old school are we talking here? Like early nineties? Like early nineties, part of the eighties. You know, like old school. Like probably the latest would be like WrestleMania ten. Okay, nice. Yeah. Now, do you think we'll ever yeah. see some of those wrestling moves get uh, incorporated into the octagon? Oh, uh, you know, maybe someday I try and get off like a Death Valley driver or something like that. We'll see. <laughs> but, but you're. Okay. Hey, man, I'd be happy with the Boston Crab. I, I try. It. Just people wiggle out, and it makes me sad. <laughs> half crab, half crab is more is is more applicable because if they don't go over, then you break their femur by accident. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, hey, do you got a prediction for the uh, main event between Eddie Alvarez and Rafael Dos Anjos? RDA by decision. RDA by decision. Okay, it's going all five. Yeah. Awesome. Perhaps uh, you'll be uh, facing the winner soon? Hey, if I would just keep healthy and keep active, I, I, that's the plan. Awesome. Well, Mitch Clark, thank you so much for taking out the time. I really appreciate it. And uh, best of luck to you, man. Thank you. I thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, stay in touch. Okay. Take care. There you have it, guys. Danger Zone. Mitch Clark about to take on Iris Joe. Joseph Duffy at UFC Fight Night 90. Man, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. I don't know who I'm going to pick. I think I'm, I'm leaning towards Mitch Clark on this one. But either way, it's going to be fun. And I have a feeling it might end in submission. So, yeah, go check it out. July 7, 2016 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. UFC Fight Night 90, headlined by Rafael Dos Anjos, taking on Eddie Alvarez for the UFC lightweight belt. Until then, tune in to Bloody Elbow for all your event coverage. Find me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, and go be a good person. <laughs>